You're tuned in to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. That's not to say that they don't respect the run game that you have, but you're talking about one quarterback leading the, the conference in passing so far this year. And remember, he didn't start the first game. All right. Still played a lot, though. And also bringing some humor to your day. I, I just don't want to disappoint you. I just... <laughs> As much as I disappoint you, I don't want to disappoint you in some things that you expect from me. Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Hey, good morning. We are uh, counting it down to kickoff today as uh, we come to you from uh, Lubbock this morning and Houston. With Jamie Lint and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines and uh, look forward to hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. If you uh, have a score prediction, a thought, a uh, comment on... Uh, the matchup or uh, anything sports related, you can hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app. It's presented by Happy State Bank. Benchmark hotline is open as well at uh, 806-771-0973. Uh, Jamie you know, J. Chuck, we, we are counting it down to mm-hmm. kick off. And before the last break, you you said some 12 hours from now we'll have kickoff. And by some 12, you meant 14. Yeah. So we just let's remember it's not a six o'clock kickoff. Sure. But sure. eight o'clock. Sure. Some some twelve hours and plus two plus plus two. So right. So yeah. some fourteen hours, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about my own bedtime, Jamie. I was just thinking about that just it's just it's bit. gonna be a late a, a late night for a lot of folks tonight. Somebody on the chat line mentioned that he doesn't stay up to midnight for just anything. Right, and Red Raider football is right. one of the things that that is worthy of that. So, yeah, it's gonna be a late night for Red Raider fans tonight. Uh, Jay writes in this: uh, Life is great. Happy game day, Red Raider Nation. Football, basketball, baseball, and Lady Raider basketball look great. The Stars, Mavs, and Cowboys are winning, and the Rangers are signing dudes left and right. It feels like the movie A Wonderful Life. Boy, <laughs> Jay's glass is overfilling today. Meanwhile, Red Raider Two Guns is at the other end of the spectrum. Chuck, I don't get excited about anything anymore. My meter is low on mercury. Man, we need to get him some spirit, don't we, Jamie? We need to get the... Me. Palm squad or the cheerleaders over to his house and say two bits, four bits, six bits a dollar, all for the Raiders. Stand up and holler. I think just a bottle of Mountain Dew probably would help. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, that usually helps with me. Are you uh are you doing the do this morning? <laughs> Not yet. No. Not yet. Okay, you gotta you gotta <laughs> gotta pace yourself, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly uh, right. Speaking of Red Raider basketball. Uh, the good guys put it on South Carolina State last night, Jamie. 110 to 71. Outscored them 59 36 in the first half. And uh, Coach Adams wasn't happy about the finish of the first half. They allowed some points down the stretch. And then uh, in the second half, outscored them 51 to 35. Red Raiders uh, with five and double figures, paced by Kevin O'Banner. He had 24. Daniel Bacho had 17. Davion Harmon had 14. Pop Isaacs had 14. And then 13 for Jalen Tyson. How about this? You went 14 of 28 from beyond the arc. That'll win you a lot of basketball games, 50%. And uh, 38 of 59 from the field, 19 field goals in each half uh, for the Red Raiders. And on your 38 made field goals, 26 assists, Jamie. That's good. A good number. Mm-hmm. These are all winning numbers, but I mean, you have to remember you played South Carolina yeah, State. Yeah, I, I was about to ask. Can you tell me the pulse of yeah. the team we were playing? Because I don't there know if they one. had one. Yeah. There was one. Yeah, and they also. Were, I mean, I feel like this is like the third or fourth time we've said this this year, but they were without their leading score. Mm. <laughs> um, the only number that matters, Chuck. Only number that matters in is four. The four games. Four days until you play a real team. Okay. 
Right. <laughs> okay. Cause right. No, I, I think it's, I think it's great that your, your offense is clicking. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's now three games in a row. You scored over a hundred. Uh, it, it looks like, you know, in any given day, you have the ability to, to, to really shoot it well from behind the arc. And, you know, sometimes you're going to have those days and, uh, hopefully that, you know, comes in some big games or whatever, but you can't really rely on that a whole bunch. Um, but it does feel like your offense is flowing. Harmon's doing great things and uh, with uh, pushing the tempo and, and finishing in the transition. But it's, uh, again, it's just, man, I, I, I have no idea what we have in this basketball team. And I would say the same thing about the Lady Raider team. Just no, no idea what we have in these basketball teams because – the level of competition is just nowhere near what we're going to start facing come Saturday. No, no doubt. Uh, and we're not the only team in the country that schedules this way. Yeah. So I'm not trying to suggest that it's, yeah. it's just the way of it's the way of the world. But you know, uh, the fact of the matter is you've played two decent teams and lost to both of those teams. And um, they may be better than decent teams when it's all said and done. We'll, we'll see, but um, you are, but, but, you are making bad teams look bad. About two weeks ago, you weren't doing that. Mm-hmm. You were being challenged by those teams. So uh, clearly you're playing much better basketball than you were two or three weeks ago. The, uh, the one, one negative, in addition to the team you were playing last night, uh, your free throw shooting was uh, horrific. 20 of 33 from the free throw line. And I don't care who you're playing, that, that doesn't matter because, I mean, their free throw defense. I mean, they, they line up on the line just like everybody else. So, I mean, 60.6% from the free throw line last night for the Red Raiders. That's the, it's one little hitch in the giddy up. All right. I do think the, um, and, and as far as the women were concerned, they won last uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, 68 to 45 in Mississippi Valley state. Uh, they're, um, uh, well, they they were at least active, uh, so I'd say they had a they had a pulse. They had uh, three in double figures. Lady Raiders had four in double figures, including twelve from uh, Jasmine Shavers. I think the big difference is is you know they're just trying to uh, trying to get back to a tournament on the women's side. I mean they haven't been to postseason play since 2013. So you got 12 victories. Okay, so you did what you're supposed to do, with the exception of losing to Jackson State in the second uh, game of the season, and for them. They're going to play a team that's uh, picked to win the conference on Saturday. Now, the one positive that you might have on this is Iowa State hasn't played a game in 13 days. So do they come in with rust or do they come in full of vim and vigor? I I can assure you this, their coach, Bill Finley, will have them ready to play. I would guess both. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they'll be real anxious to play, but at the same time, they'll be a little rusty in, you know, compared to what they normally are. So can you uh, can you take advantage of it? The one thing that they did do better yesterday, Jamie, as far as the uh, the ladies are concerned, they took care of the basketball better. They just turned it over thirteen times, uh, which, considering the last time out, they turned it over twenty two times and looked, you know, a little sloppy in their twenty one point victory. At least in this twenty three point victory, they, uh, they they took care of business a little bit better and spread it out. And they did this uh, yesterday without Bree Scott. She did not play. Uh, she. Uh, Drove all night from Little Rock and uh, didn't arrive in Lubbock until 8.30 yesterday morning. So uh, she uh, sat on the pine yesterday and did not play. More of a precautionary reason. There wasn't any reason to play her uh, with her not getting any sleep and uh, not participating in shoot-around. So it was I feel like this... I feel like this is a big game for the Lady Raiders on Saturday. And what I mean by that, not, not that you have to win it, mm-hmm. but you're getting people to buy into the program. You're seeing the wins. You're, you're excited about the wins. You see that non-conference record and it's pretty and shiny and all that good stuff. Um, looks like you're making progress all the above. Um, if, if you get beat badly at home by Iowa state, and I know, as you mentioned, they're a good basketball team. I think that makes people think that non-conference record was, you know, not, not really that shiny anymore. Mm-hmm. And so to me, if you're getting the fan and wanting to get the fan base to, to, to buy in and to feel like, hey, this team's really making progress, I think you have to have a decent showing here. I'm not saying you have to win, but, yeah. man, you can't get beat by 25. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think you speak a lot of truth there. 624 this morning on Lubbock Sports Station. 
Double T 97.3. This is Optimum Game Day Live coverage. We get you ready for Texas Tech and Ole Miss. Tonight, the kick at 8 right here on Double T 97.3. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home. So, you know, at some point in time, you're going to have to venture out outside the 806. So that'll be... That'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Sure. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. The 28th day of December. Jamie, it's the final Wednesday of 2022. And with this day in okay. sports history, here is Jeff McGuire. Yep, sure is the last Wednesday in December. Okay. 1944. Former Washington third baseman Buddy Lewis wins the Distinguished Flying Cross for his efforts in World War II. Okay. 1957, CBS states that it won't broadcast baseball where minor league games are on. I don't think they'd make that same concession today. A year later in 1958, the greatest game ever played. The Baltimore Colts won the 26th NFL championship game against the New York Giants 23 to 17 at Yankee Stadium in the first ever sudden death overtime game in NFL history. 17 future Hall of Famers of the Pro Football Hall of Fame were involved in this game. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yes. <laughs> Might be one of the reasons it's the greatest game ever played. Right. Good job. 1975, in the aftermath of the Cold War, the New York Rangers became the first team in NHL history to face the touring Soviet hockey squad. The Soviet Army beat the Rangers 7-3 to at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, this was very interesting. The, you know, you just, you just had these guys that uh, you kind of felt like you were in war against, and all of a sudden they were coming over here to, to play hockey. You know, the Ruskies were invading you. Uh, we may have been distracted, though. On this day in 1975 from yeah. that because of this. 32 seconds left. That's a Hail Mary. That is the Hail Mary. That is the Hail Mary. Not right? just a. That is the. Roger, Roger Staubach. Yeah. Um, it's amazing to me listening to that, how play-by-play has changed. Was that the television broadcast? That was the television broadcast. Okay. But still, how it has changed since that. <clears throat> I was watching it, that game. You, you would have heard. Staubach gets the snap, looking mm-hmm. back. Good protection and a deep throw. He's throwing to the right side. You'd heard all of that even on the TV call. Right. You get none of that there. I almost didn't mm-hmm. play it because you didn't know what was going on until sure. the very end. Sure. But, you know, Hail Mary and Roger Staubach, Drew Pearson, and the Cowboys beat the Vikings in the NFC Championship game. Well, it's just because it was just so wild what happened there. You didn't expect it. That was at the old... Uh, Uh, Met uh, there in Bloomington, Minnesota. 1990, the very first blockbuster bowl. Mm. Florida State beats Penn State 24 to 17. There's a word from the past. (laughs) No doubt. (laughs) And in 2008, the Detroit Lions crashed to a 31 to 21 loss to the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field. They become the first team in NFL history to go winless in a 16 game season. Wow. Forrest Gump would love today because today is National Box of Chocolates Day. Mm. Happy birthday to John Legend, who's 44. Maggie Smith is 88. Denzel Washington, 68. Seth Meyers, 49. And Adam Vinatieri is 50 today. I bet he could still kick it. I bet NFL. he can. Yeah. <laughs> I bet so. And on this day in 1879, right fielder. For one game, 
Moonlight Graham was born Ooh. for the Uni uh, New York Giants, who inspired the novel uh, character in the Shoeless Joe in the Shoeless Joe Jackson in the Oscar nominated movie Field of Dreams. He did exist. He practiced medicine in Minnesota for 54 years and might have been just a history footnote, if not for the Field of Dreams and had the author coming across a footnote in the baseball encyclopedia. Burt Lancaster played him as a doctor, an aspiring baseball player, but uh, and much like his movie character. Never got an at-bat. In real life, Graham played three additional seasons in the minor leagues after his one major league game that he played in 1905. In the film, Graham played by Wiley is seen batting right-handed, but in fact, he was a lefty. And that is this day in sports history. All right. Uh, I have good news for Red Raider fans on this day in sports history, Jamie. Okay. I usually do this for you on our optimum game day live coverage when we're outside of uh, Jones Stadium. Tell you how we did on this day in uh, in history as a as a football team. Texas Tech has never lost on December the twenty eighth. Okay, a year ago mm. the Red Raiders beat Mississippi State thirty four to seven. That was a Sunny Cumbie coach team. On this day in twenty twelve in Houston at the Meineke Car Care Bowl game. Chris Thompson, who was the interim coach for that game after Tommy Tuberville had resigned and Cliff Kingsbury was your new head coach and in attendance, won over Minnesota, did the Red Raiders, 34-31 to on December 28th of 2012. In uh, 1989, a Spike Dykes coach team won in the All-American Bowl in Birmingham, Alabama over Duke, who is playing tonight coached by Steve Spurrier. That was his last game as the coach of the Blue Devils. Uh, the Red Raiders winning that night 49-21, to a huge game for James Gray in, uh, in that game. And then you have one tie. Uh, this took place in the Peach Bowl, which would have been in Atlanta. A Jim Carlin coach team took on Vanderbilt, and they tied 6-6. <laughs> that was supposed to have been exciting. It must have been exciting. Okay. So how about that? You have never lost on December the 28th. Mm, hopefully you didn't just jinx us. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> Probably hear about that tomorrow. No, no. I think mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll be just uh, just fine. No, no, no. If you jinx us, you will absolutely hear about it tomorrow. Okay. That's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. <laughs> Go ahead and big book that one. All right. Just uh, before seven here this morning. On the morning drive, take your thoughts, your comments in the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Benchmark hotline is open as well if you'd like to weigh in and give us your thoughts on the game tonight as Texas Tech takes on Ole Miss. Jamie, in 13 hours and 6 minutes, Mark. We'll have it Let's at uh, 8 o'clock uh, tonight here on Double T 97.3 from NRG there in Houston. We'll continue with Optimum Game Day Live coverage presented by United Supermarkets. Sports Center is next. Your morning blend of sports. K State is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37 34 overtime win over number 22, Texas. And humor. I'm sure to tell them that. You, you suggested that. <laughs> and of course, they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. We'll have uh, coverage from Houston all day long today as we get you ready for the Texas Bowl tonight against uh, Ole Miss. Red Raiders uh, and Ole Miss will kick off tonight at 8 o'clock from NRG there in Houston. Uh, Texas Tech is uh, not the favorite uh, tonight, Jamie, as uh, Ole Miss... Uh, is uh, favored to uh, to win the ball game, and um, you kind of think about this a little bit, and maybe maybe they've earned that. But man, they've they've lost four of their last five heading into this game, so can't really say that they have uh, a whole lot of momentum uh, going into this game. Uh, conversely, you look at uh, the Red Raiders, who have won three straight, and uh, feel like that they're. Uh, going in uh, in a very, very positive direction with a lot of momentum, but Ole Miss is favored by three and a half. Yeah, I guess it's just you're looking at an SEC foe and that's where they 
they make that decision. I mean, that was, um, I mean, Ole Miss was the top 10 team at times this year. Uh, they have not played well at the end of the season. There's, there's no question about it. And there's also, remember, there was a lot of uh, buzz and talk about the possibility of their head coach Lane Kiffin leaving. You know, that was probably a distraction there at the end of the season when they lost to Mississippi State, all, all that good stuff. So, um, it doesn't feel like a program that has a ton of momentum going in, but um, I think Kiffin's done a good job there. So I, I think this is definitely going to be a tough game for the Red Raiders. He, uh, you know, you look at the um, ESPN matchup predictor, uh, and they have uh, Ole Miss at 62% and the Red Raiders at 38%. Um, they need to update their season leader uh, information on this. Uh, he is the season leader, but he's no longer with you, and which is really unfortunate. Uh, Donovan Smith, your uh, leader in terms of passing yardage, uh, 1,505 yards and, and 12 touchdowns. And, you know, the, the guy that forces the fumble uh, that leads to the kick in, in overtime to uh, beat Texas, Reggie Pearson, he's not with you either. But, you know, when you, when you really kind of think about it, your uh, defectors uh, to the transfer portal – probably haven't been as much as as other teams um around the country and you don't really have anybody with the exception of Tyree Wilson sitting out um but you know he's the guy that was injured and even if he were coming back next year would probably be you know questionable to uh to play so i think you know by and large you've been able to keep your team intact maybe when when others around the country just you know on a 30,000 foot view have have seen more people go into uh, to the transfer portal. Yeah, it feels like you've been uh, luckier with that regard in that regard than than other schools. But I, I don't, I don't um, you know, obviously we don't follow all schools, but uh, some teams have definitely been hit a lot of harder. It feels like Oklahoma State was missing a lot of guys last night. I think that speaks to you know what Joey McGuire has been able to do and being a player's coach and guys wanting to play for him and guys aren't necessarily looking for greener pastures unless they're in a situation where they realize they're not going to get any playing time. So when you look at, at Ole Miss and who they beat this year, I mean, I realize they play in the SEC, but they, they lost at LSU. They lost to Alabama. They lost at Arkansas. They lost at home you know, Thanksgiving night or the day after to uh, Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl. I guess it was Thanksgiving night. Um, and so they, they've lost four of their last five. They beat Troy. They beat Central Arkansas. They won at Georgia Tech, forty-two to nothing. They beat Tulsa. Their, their one really signature win on their on their schedule, Jamie, is Kentucky, and even that one doesn't look just great. They beat Kentucky at home, twenty-two to nineteen. So they they finished eight and four. But I feel like their eight and four isn't even comparison to the Red Raiders seven and five. Um, I, I mean, you, you, you threw those schools up. They lost to LSU. Mm-hmm. They lost to Alabama. They lost to Arkansas. They lost to Mississippi mm-hmm. state. It, it was like you rattled off tech's non-conference basketball schedule there. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are some pretty good programs. No, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, they, they, they lost to Alabama by, by six, you know, um, Arkansas was kind of a, a stinker for them because, Again, Arkansas is not a great football team this year, but that one was on the road. Um, Mississippi State, it was a, a two-point game. I mean, they lost at home. It, yeah. And again, that was all the all the drama of whether a coach going to be there or not. You just felt like that team was going to be, you know, distracted that week or whatever. So I, I I I buy into what you're saying, and that their biggest win is is oh by the way, a top ten team in Kentucky at the time. At the okay. time, yeah. Uh, at the time. Okay. That's, that's a good win. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't see any top 10 wins on our schedule. Do you, do you No, no, I no. mean, but, okay. but I mean, you, you beat Oklahoma, you beat, you beat Texas, a terrible Oklahoma team at the, at the you know, a Texas team without their backup or with their backup quarterback. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Put it like that. I mean, I guess I just look at it and go. Oh, you be, you, you okay, won your you last. Said you, you won your last three games. I mean, winning at Iowa State is no is no slouch. 
you know, beating Oklahoma because I do feel like Oklahoma was gaining momentum there at the end. We played them probably at the at their best, uh, with the exception maybe at the start of the season for OU. I just I just think you have more quality wins up and down your schedule than what they do. You had a tough stretch, no, no doubt, when you had all all the top twenty five matchups. There's there's no no question about it. So you've played a tough schedule. I'm not trying to poo poo tech schedule, but I, I, forgive me if I'm not poo pooing Ole Misses either. Okay, I, I think a six point loss to Alabama is is pretty impressive to me. Okay, I, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I would say that's more impressive than a, a win over uh, an Oklahoma team this year's Oklahoma team. Okay. All right. Well, again, I, I guess I just looked at it from the standpoint that I felt like your 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 seven wins was more impressive overall than their than their eight wins. I I, I think both are good football teams. Yeah. Clearly, because I think I mean, both are good football. They're both sure. playing in a pretty good bowl game. I mean, it's not the. It's not the college football playoff or it's not the mm-hmm. orange or the rose or the sugar or the, mm-hmm. you know, something along those lines. Which, by yeah. the way, for the Orange Bowl to be subjected to playing on December 30th, I think it's just, I think it's just criminal. You know, it's just, it's just, it just really saddens me to see the Orange Bowl subjected to a Friday night, you know, nondescript day of just... Really shoved off to the misfit. It's not a toys. person. It's a game. I know. It's not a person. It's just it's its feelings aren't hurt. It just it's it just, just a game. It just saddens me a little bit to to see it shuffled off to a Friday, like it is. If but, New Year's Day was a Friday, it would be a Friday. If it was played on New Year's Day, I know, but it'd be it, like you're you're in complaining the that a game is being played. It's be it's being the spotlight. It's not in the it's not in it's the spotlight. Spri- it's the spotlight on Friday. It's not in the spotlight. Uh, okay, so um, so. Th- now that we've kind of analyzed the schedule, <laughs> which I, I hear what you're saying, Jamie. I mean, I really, I really do. I guess I just look at it from from the standpoint that they've lost four or five coming in, and you've won your last three, and feel like you've got some momentum. So we'll we'll take a little bit deeper look as we uh, go through uh, the matchups because it's real distinct difference between the, yeah. the two offenses of this of these football teams. Yeah. Well, I think the key thing here, Chuck, is is the whole who wants to be there more mm-hmm. factor. And I think the Red Raiders are going to be that team. So that's what gives me a lot of hope for tonight, too. Sure. Sure. I think I think you're right about that. Hey, they won the rodeo the other night. So that's good that's news. That's nice. Yeah. We're from Texas. Of course we win the rodeo. <laughs> of course we win the rodeo, right? <laughs> It'd be like, what in the world is going on down there? Joey that's McGuire, right. you guys can't win the rodeo? Come on, man. Let's go. All right, Jamie's got a question for uh, me, Jeff, and our fine listening audience that's tuned in today. We'll do that next here this morning on The Morning Drive. Getting your sports day started the right way. This is The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 football conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference? if Tech does not win it this year. Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five right? days a week together. Why yeah. do, Why would yeah. we need to communicate during the weekends? <laughs> right. Save we it for the show. We, we, say, we do. We save it for the show. Just... Tune in to the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. Uh, let me see if I can get the day. I'm thinking uh, your question of the day is, uh, okay, is uh, pregame chips and queso or chips and hot sauce is the main event. Uh, wings, are they uh, breaded or not? Um, and then uh, what about the little... Uh, Weenie dogs in the barbecue sauce. Or that is that uh, part of the pregame or postgame or affair uh, today? Any of those uh, part of your your uh, preguntas, por favor? No, there, I was Mr. Lint. Go with my all-time favorite mm-hmm. to listen to the answers on. Well, what's well, what are you grilling today? You know, what's on your grill? <laughs> <laughs> that was what I was going to go with. Yeah, I figured that. Yeah. I figured that. Yeah, I, but yeah. but you yeah, got I guess something I'll else. Change. 
I'll change it up a little bit and okay. talk about boring sports instead of food. <laughs> sarcasm, sarcasm, sarcasm. No, I know. The, okay. the light's flashing behind you. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. All right, so today will be the Red Raiders' 40th all-time bowl game. Mm-hmm. The record, not very shiny. Right. 15, 24, and 1. You tied in the 1974 Peach Bowl. Yes. 6-6 with Bandy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my all-time favorite was in 1949. Of course, this would be my favorite when you played in the Raisin Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, losing to the San Jose State Spartans 20 to 13 in front of, shockingly enough, exactly 10,000 people. Exactly. It's amazing. Okay. What are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds? Mm-hmm. Okay. So 15, 24, and one, your record through the first 39 for the Red Raiders. My question for you guys today and our fine listening audience is what's your favorite Red Raider Bowl game of all time? Obviously, we're going to have a lot of recency bias here because oh, not many of us were alive for the 1938 Sun Bowl. So sure. <laughs> I, I would assume it'll be I would assume it would be something over the last 20, 30 years. You know, shockingly, I might say I'm going to say the 2009 Alamo Bowl, uh, the victory over Michigan State, 41 to 31. I'm picking a game that I was that I saw. OK, that I was in attendance for. Um, and Ruffin McNeil was the interim coach. We wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> well. It can be whatever you want, Chuck. That's okay. totally fine. So I answered the question. So Je- Jeff, there you go. So let's see there. I did something different today. I answered your question. It's <laughs> good. At the time, it wasn't. But looking back, I can appreciate your holiday win over uh, Aaron Rodgers. Um, it was a game that I was very nervous about going into that. Um, I, I wanted to be super pumped because you're playing in a great bowl game, but I also knew that there's a reason you're playing in that game because everybody in front of you moved up one. Yeah, It, it kind of opened up for you, um, and you were facing a much higher ranked team. And I, and I was nervous pretty much three quarters of that game, it felt like. Uh, until Tech really took over. So that the, looking back, that's my favorite. But in the moment, that and the Minnesota game were very nerve-wracking at the time, but looking back, they're fun. I got to start picking in front of Jeff. Did I pick the both Holiday of yours? Bowl, The <laughs> Holiday Bowl in 2004 was was my favorite one. I mean, you had, you had a, a top five team and they were facing in Cal. Um, you, I think they were top five. Um, you had Aaron Rodgers whining about, we wanted the Longhorns. We got stuck with, you know, a lower team and, you know, and then you just went out there and put it on them. Uh, you put it on Son- Sonny Cumby was awesome. Um, and it just felt like it was a big name team at the time in Cal. They're not early now, but they were a big deal. And to me, that was like, um, that was like, we've arrived. We can play with good football teams. And that was, I mean, just a blast. I rem- remembering that night. I don't remember it being as close as Jeff mentioned. I mean, you win 45, 31. It felt like we were, you know, by the time we rolled into the second quarter, it felt like we took control of that game. And um, it, it was a kind of, you could kind of coast to a win in that one. It was, it was a party all night long, if I remember correctly. Um, if I couldn't pick that one, cause Jeff stole it from me, I'd have to go with the insight bowl. I mean, that comeback was just epic. That's the game against, uh, Minnesota in uh, 2006, in which you win 44 to 41. My, my, my second one would be the, the next year, which was the Gator, um, against, uh, number 20, Virginia. Uh, and you win that ball game 31 to, to 28. So. I, I like I like that one too. The other one that kind of stood out to me, and it came the what, year, the year. What at, did you like about the Gator? What was it? What, what, which uh, what was the Gator? What stood out to you about that game? You won on New Year's Day. Um, you you came back. I thought that was a game that you yeah, came back. You and were won. behind. You came back and won yeah. that game too. Um, uh-huh. Didn't didn't look like it was going to end uh, well for you. Um, it seems like you were down. Maybe like were you down like. Two two touchdowns in that game. I yeah, I want to. I can't I wanna, remember. I remember. 
I remember you played really po- really bad early on in that game. Yeah, I want to say there was people that thrown in the towel there pretty pretty quickly on that game. The other game that kind of stood out to me was the year after the uh, Cotton Bowl debacle, uh, in which you lost fifty five to fourteen. You come back and next year you win in the Copper Bowl over Air Force fifty five to forty one. That was a Spike Dykes coach team. So yeah, Hans Bard and and Zebby both had big big days that day. The uh, couple people on the uh, Yates Flooring Center chat line, one says the 89 All-American Bowl. We talked about that earlier in which uh, James Gray and the, and the Red Raiders ran uh, up and down the field against uh, Duke. Uh, somebody, PJ, points out last year's win over Michigan State. Mississippi. Uh, I'm sorry, Mississippi State. I don't know why I said Michigan State. Or maybe it's just in don't my Don't know head. either. <laughs> but Mississippi State. He says we're going to look back on the Iowa State win last year and the bowl win as the catapult to our incoming success with coach mcguire and the football program okay uh this like love the 89 all-american bowl beat spurrier uh led duke uh, james gray set the legion field rushing record anthony lynn had a long touchdown i forgot about that spurrier bragged about his heisman spike mentioned his hellman's mayonnaise award yeah <laughs> so well, you Again, your record all time is not shiny, but you have won 10 out of your last 14, so that's sure, good. Sure, no doubt. And you've taken it a little bit more serious as opposed to there were times when you didn't take it real serious. It was like a reward uh, for everybody, and you treated it like a vacation. And as a result, uh, looked like it on the field when you got uh, to actual game day. So, yeah, the, the last 14 games, you've won 10, as Jamie said. Hopefully you win tonight. You take on Ole Miss. We'll have the kick for you. Coverage all day long here on Double T 97.3 as part of Optimum Game Day Live. You're listening to the Morning Drive Podcast from Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. A little bit later on tonight, uh, we'll have uh, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. That'll be at 8. And then the Rangers playing at Seattle uh, tonight. And also bringing some humor to your day. Was it pretty big? Yeah. I mean, Impressive. yeah. Was it fascinating? It was. I thought it was fascinating. It <laughs> kind of smelled, but I mean. <laughs> Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Hey, good morning. It is the morning drive portion of Optimum Game Day Live coverage here on Double T 97.3. And we come to you today uh, with uh, our mobile studio intact with uh, Jamie in Houston. And I'm inside the First United Bank main branch studio here in downtown Lubbock and look forward to hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Jeff McGuire was with me as uh, we uh, break down Texas Tech and Ole Miss. Ole Miss comes in eight and four, losers four of their last five, Red Raiders seven and five, winners of their last three games. Um, Jamie, when you uh, when you look at Ole Miss, man, you, you can't peel back the onion very far before you go they are stout when it comes to running the football. Um, this year, they uh, have had 571 rushing attempts. The average five and a half yards per tote. The average 262 yards per game. They give up basically 162 yards a game, and they have 31 rushing touchdowns. <clears throat> they are strong running the football. Yeah, I don't think there's any question, and you can stop us if you've heard this before, uh, that stopping the run and being able to run the football will be a major key for the Red Raiders today. Yeah. Uh, Their leading attacker uh, from a rushing standpoint, Quinshawn Judkins, uh, 1,476 yards. This team of uh, Ole Miss broke a team rushing record uh, that goes back to 1957. And for Judkins, he he breaks the single season record for rushing at Ole Miss that goes back to 1949. So, I mean, they're stout. We have another guy named Zach Evans. He's rushed uh, 136 times for 899 yards uh, for the season. Uh, Judkins, his longest run from carry is 61 yards. And then uh, Jackson Dart, uh, he's rushed for 117 attempts on the season, 548 yards. And he's their their, their quarterback. 
Yeah, he's the quarterback. Yep, dual threat guy. So he's um, he's passed for uh, 2,613 yards, 18 touchdowns, and thrown eight interceptions uh, on the season. Yeah, I guess maybe maybe I'm just looking through rose colored glasses here or, or scarlet colored glasses, but. I feel pretty good about your ability to stop the run, Jamie. I mean, you, I think you've done a decent, more than decent job of that uh, this year. I mean, your opponents have only rushed for 166 yards against you on average for the season. And I feel like that, you know, the defensive line and the and the linebackers have done a, a really good job of, of keeping you from getting gashed when you compare it to years past. Is that is that a fair observation? Well, I think you're much improved in that area over over years past. So I think that part of it is fair. Uh, I, I think that you've done a decent job. I don't, I don't think you're a dominant uh, defensive front when it comes to stopping the run or whatever. But I don't think you have to be, um, you know, shut down defensively against the run. You just have to you have to manage it right and mm-hmm. and just not get killed by it. So oh, Ole Miss is going to be able to move the ball. So I mean, Ole Miss is going to be able to put points on the board. Uh, it's just a matter of how are you making it difficult for them? And then is, is your offense answering at, as well? I, I don't see this as a super high scoring game, you know, in the forties or fifties, but I, I still think you can, I still think you can expect to see both teams hovering into the thirties. So um, yeah, they're, they're, I feel like maybe we're more positive about the run defense than uh, maybe we should be because it's just been so bad in the past Mm -hmm. and it's, and it's much improved now, but um, there's been times, I mean, obviously the Kansas state game, you just, you didn't get it done against the run and the, and and the uh, Baylor game, you didn't get it done against the run, but um, there's been other games where I felt like you did a really good job. So Hopefully it'll be one of those those games where you're you're making it difficult on the opponent. There's not just huge running lanes all over the place. Well, you've got experience in you know facing those runners like Coach McGuire's talked about and a couple of the you know audio clips that we've played from him this morning in terms of going up against K State's running attack and and Texas's running attack. Um, mm-hmm. uh, let me ask you this: Do you feel do you feel better about your defense going into this game than your offense? Um, I think you're facing a really good offensive opponent. So I think they have the bigger challenge. The defense does. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I was just going to hand out grades for the season and I'm not talking about the opponent, I'm just like, okay, this is how I think your offense did. This is how I think your defense did. I definitely would feel better about the defense than the offense. Yeah, because I feel like going into this game, I feel like you can look. I don't. I don't think you're going to skunk them or anything like that. But I feel like that your defense is going to put you in position to win the ball game because I feel like that they have proven that they have done that throughout the year. But I, I feel for whatever reason, I just I'm, I'm very uneasy at quarterback. And you know, I've I've been uneasy with Tyler Shuck as a quarterback maybe since day one, and. Um, and I'm not saying that I think he's a bad quarterback. I just I feel like that he's fragile. Weren't and, you the one though that said he looks like a quarterback? I, I when in the, like a year ago when he got here. Well, in sure, sure. Yeah, I I, I said. And that. you were very impressed that he looks like the quarterback, and he's your guy. <laughs> I did I did say that, but I but I. I mean, you're allowed to be nervous, but the day one part was the oh, you were locked in and ready to go year one. Why, why is it you guys just remember just tidbits of things that I say and then bring them back to me at key junctures? I feel like that. I uh, feel like that your vault is uh, very expansive and uh, you have memories like elephants. But I don't know. I just feel. I just feel uneasy. That's just how I feel going into this game. Is that fair, Jamie? It's interesting because it, it sounds to me like you're super confident in the game, yet you're telling me that you're uncomfortable or nervous about the quarterback position. And it, I don't think you have a chance to win the game if you don't get solid quarterback play. Right. No, I, I'm ner- I'm nervous about that. Yeah, but but you sound like you're very confident we're going to win this game. Yeah, I'm confident. Um, where, where, where are you on a scale to 1 to 10 on confidence level? I think I'm at 7. 
I'm seven. at seven. Okay. Where are you? I'm um, mm, 5.1. 5.1. 809 this morning on the morning drive 5.1. You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to DoubleT973.com.